Hey guys, I'm Brian Carter. Um, I run a digital ad uh, company and I've been doing um, Facebook ads since 2010 and Google ads since 2005. So today I want to talk to you real quick about five keys to grow your business with online advertising. These are things that we use for companies and um, things I've learned from working with a bunch of different companies. You can check out uh, some of the companies I've worked with. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on me. I want to help you. All right. So five keys to grow your business with online advertising. Uh, I'm going to run through them real quick first and then we'll go into detail. The first one is adapting. We need to adapt in order to win. Um, changes, all kinds of changes are always happening in business and on the advertising platforms and in social media and in Google search. There's all kinds of things changing all the time. Trends on YouTube and things like that. We have to know what they are and we have to adapt to them or we're in trouble. You know, basically, I, I talk a lot, I do keynote speeches, I talk a lot about disruption. And disruption happens, you know, your company goes out of business or your entire industry has to change because people get complacent and they're not looking at what's coming down the pike. So we got to adapt. Um, we got to be visible. We got to show up to our potential customers and even potentially employees because they're, we're in a big talent war. Um, so you got to be visible in order to have a chance at surviving and thriving in business. Likeability is kind of a tiebreaker, right? People need to trust you and that's so important. We'll talk about that, but it's, it's, it's foundational. But likeability, you know, you could trust a lot of different potential people that you want to do business with, but it's the ones that you really like that you tend to choose. So likeability can be a tiebreaker in that decision of who they're going to work with. Creativity will boost your response. Um, this is a weird photo that I'll explain later. Um, but today online with advertising or anything else, the more stuff you create, the better chance you have of finding something people like. And that's where you really can dial things up and get bigger results. Testing drives success, having a scientific mindset, a testing mindset, not being so attached to your ideas because they, you know, you don't know what people are going to think of them. You don't know what they're going to respond to well and what they're not. So we have to have a testing mindset. Those are the five keys to online advertising, getting, uh, growing your business with it. And we're going to talk in detail about those in a second. Okay, let's talk about adaptation. This is a joke I always do uh, from my stand-up comedy stuff. I do it for keynotes. It's, goes like this. Um, you know, I'm 46, I'm not the oldest person in the world, but uh, I have started to experience some of the effects of aging. And I can tell you this, when you're young and you wake up in pain, you're like, what did I do yesterday? Oh, that's what I did. When you're old and you wake up in pain, you're like, I didn't do anything yesterday. And some people laugh at that, some people just think, think it's sad. But things change, right? How have marketing and business changed? Every technological revolution has created and destroyed businesses back since the Industrial Revolution. Ford's assembly line upset the horse cart and wagon wheel industries. The PCs threw the Rolodex in a circular file. Google turned the yellow pages into a really great doorstop. Netflix busted Blockbuster. Amazon shut down borders. Even the future has changed, right? Like in 1955, we're like, I bet there'd be flying cars, right? In 2019, we're like feeding women Tide Pods. I don't know what happened to our future, guys. So if we don't adapt, we might not even survive. We have to move, right? We have to keep going. We grow when we push the limit and try new things. So having that spirit of trying new stuff, very important. Let's talk about visibility. Um, you know, growing up, my parents and my teachers said to me, Brian, you have so much potential. Why aren't you using your potential? What I heard was, we don't know why you suck so much right now, but you better not suck this much in the future. So I adapted, I grew, grew some businesses. I had businesses that failed and I have three businesses now that are succeeding and I've learned a lot and I, I teach businesses how to grow and that's one of the things I talk about to businesses when, when I do that, whether it's through consulting or keynote speaking, I say uh, we, we need to talk about ubiquity. It's, it's a weird word that means being everywhere. You want to be everywhere that your potential customer looks, right? They want to see you everywhere, whether that's with just cold advertising or retargeting. It's good to do both. We want to, we want to do that because we want word of mouth, but how can people talk about you if they've never heard about you, right? How, how, and if they haven't heard from you recently, they'll probably forget, you know, because we got a lot of stuff going on in our lives. So when's the last time you bought something you never heard of, right? Like a pizza cutter fork or a DVD rewinder 
or a banana case. We just don't buy things we've never heard of. It doesn't happen. So it's hard to attract people who never see you. And people are not attracted by marketing and content they never see. You could have the world's best YouTube video or Facebook video, but if it plays in a forest and no one's around, it doesn't matter if it makes a sound. A lot of people out there, they put a lot of time into their content, which they should. You need to have quality content. But if it's not reaching a lot of people, you're not going to get website traffic or sales or customers or anything. You're not going to get people to come into your stores, whatever you're trying to do. Uh, if 100 people are seeing your video, that's just not enough. Okay, like the numbers you need to achieve are 10,000, 100,000, a million. Okay, you need to get a lot more views and impressions. So, who's top of mind to your customers? Is it you or your competitors? When they think about what you offer, are they thinking about you? or somebody else. And what if your competition achieves number one position in their mind and you're kind of in trouble, right? The secret of being the best is not being the best kept secret. Sometimes businesses say that to me. They're like, oh, we're kind of the best kept secret. I'm like, you're kind of a loser, <laughs> right? I mean, that's true. It's harsh, but true. I apologize. I probably shouldn't quote myself here. It's not cool, right? They say you should never ever quote yourself. Actually, I guess I said that. Okay. So ubiquity is the beginning of a process. Getting seen has to happen first. Standing out, being liked, engaging, getting people engaged, repeat exposure, retargeting is very important there. Getting people to visit your website, or your store, or whatever you want them to do, get them to call you, and then you get the money. So there's a big process you have to go through. This is called a marketing funnel. Hopefully you know what yours is, you know where you're strong and you're weak. What do you need to improve here? And is it ubiquity, right? So how do people find you? Online, it's typically social or search. Social means interrupting the right people. Ideally with ads, you target the right people, you get great results. Uh, show them your message, show them why they should care. Search is being found by people who are already looking. They may be Googling whatever they're doing. Uh, in some businesses, there's a lot of that going on. In others, there's not. You know, you need to raise awareness, so you may need to go to social. Also, Google My Business, very important. If you have a local business, make sure you get in there and control your listings. Got to achieve ubiquity in your market, right? very important. This is a different idea, uh, Nicholas Cage is everywhere. Fortunately for us, not true. I want to talk about likability with you uh, in the context of social media that teaches us a lot about liking and ha how that uh, moves into sales. So I did some research on social media for you. I did a double blind placebo controlled trial survey analysis. Not really possible. but. I did some research and I found out that social media is comprised of social and media. Yeah, pretty proud of that research. That really didn't illustrate my point though, so I made you a pie chart. 50% <laughs> social, 50% media. That means it's 50% hey I like you and 50% look at this funny cat video, right? My point is experiences that people like attract and retain people, okay? Whether they're customers or employees. Um, so you want to create a brand customer experience that gets you attention, sales, and loyalty because who wants to write a check to somebody they hate? Like the IRS. Don't tell them I said that. Who wants to work for this guy, right? He's funny in the movie, but nobody really wants this guy as a manager. He's not likable. We're attracted to people we like, like Tom Hanks, right? Tom Hanks is consistently rated near the top of Hollywood has a metric they call the Q score. Measures celebrity, familiarity, and likability. Tom Hanks, one of the most likable guys in America, according to science. There's a company called The Rare Group that uh, did some research. They asked uh, companies why, or sorry, they asked customers, why are you loyal to the brands that you're loyal to? And people said, you know, 83% said, I'm loyal because I trust them. 86% said, I'm loyal because I like them. So again, trust is the foundation of relationships. Without it, we have nothing. But liking is possibly even more important if you want to be chosen. Harvard Business Review did a study of 51,000 leaders and they found that there were some disliked leaders and liked leaders and of the disliked leaders, only one in 2,000 was able to be an effective leader. So even when it comes to leadership, whether you're leading your brand or you're leading your employees, likability is critical. We can't have this reaction to our marketing, our business, or anything, the technical term for this is MEH, M-E-H. So the more you commit to what your customers like, the more they commit to you, okay? Whatever business you're in, obviously this presentation is from a donut company that I did a keynote for.
Um, so commit to what your customers like, know what they like, figure out what they like. You're going to learn a lot of that through ad testing, uh, putting a lot of creative out there, a lot of different ideas. We're going to talk about that more in a minute. The mindset of winning brands is you got to have more than one idea. If this is this cat's only idea, he's going out of business, right? You got to be willing to fail. Michael Jordan said, I failed over and over and over again, and that's why I succeeded. So we got to put out, you know, stuff that doesn't work to find the stuff that works really well. You know what they say in business, it doesn't matter how many times you fall down, as long as you're drunk enough not to feel it. That's not the real <laughs> saying, but you know what I'm talking about. A lot of approaches, some of which are going to get an amazing outlier response, just super big. I'll give you an example in a bit. That beats having just one strategy that fails, right? My favorite demotivational poster says mistakes. It could be that the only purpose of your life is to serve as a warning to others. And we don't want to be that business or that person or that leader or whatever. We don't want to be that marketer. So you got to uh, have a lot more ideas. Here's an example of a pizza delivery chain we worked with called La Favorita. And we got them a 2200% ROI. That means that for every dollar we spent on them, we made, they made $22, $23 uh, on that spend, right? That's very efficient, very profitable. To get there, we had to test 160 different ads and that was composed of 24 audiences and hundreds of images. We tested specials versus full price. Tested a lot of stuff and here's what we found. Um, almost half the ads didn't work at all, didn't drive a single sale. You can see those on the right. Um, but then you can see where the graph starts to go up. We had a bunch of different ads that did very well. We had a 1,000% ROI ad of 4,000, even an 11,800 ROI ad, which is kind of unbelievable. But this one ad, when we spent a dollar, made us $118, right? Which is pretty cool. So that's the benefit of testing a lot of stuff. You may not find what really works unless you're testing a lot of stuff. So don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? You gotta have a lot of different ideas. Um, for example, just targeting one way, you know, obviously in a Google campaign, you got to have more keywords and in a Facebook ad campaign, you want to have more ad sets and more ways to target. Even if it's the same customer in your head, there's a lot of different ways to target those people. Beginners don't hit bullseyes with just one arrow. Lucky shots are for Hollywood, not Main Street. You can't afford to just gamble. That's why you got to create more stuff, test different targeting for the same customer, find the most effective way to reach that customer, uh, put together all of our case studies from the last what, 15 years and looked at where do we get the biggest benefit from testing different things, you know? Choosing the ad goal is very important. That's a, an advanced topic, but you, want, you definitely want to choose the goal that gives you what you want. For example, if you want traffic, don't go for engagement, right? You can do that separately, but that will not directly drive you much traffic. Um, trusting the targeting like our worst ad target versus our best 17 times the results from the best one so um, ad creative best ad creative got us nine times the results of the worst on average so you can see that compared to anything else testing the targeting is the most important thing do not shirk on that okay um, for example, we had a lead gen campaign for our, our ad agency and we used lead quizzes to, to get leads. $2 a lead. Uh, if you look at, that's on average uh, $1.82 a lead. Um, but if you look at the worst versus the best uh, cold targets, and I'm, I'm not looking at retargeting because that did the best, 87 cents. But if you look at uh, marketers job titles, that one costs $1.40 a lead and companies with 10 to 49 employees, that costs us 435 a lead. So that was a third the cost, really. If we go with the most affordable one, a third the cost, bigger response rate, right? So these are, these are targeting tests right here, 15 different ad sets that we tried for that to get those results. Um, a lot of different ways to target people, you know, in that ad manager. So we're gonna test targeting, we're gonna test ad creative, we're gonna test a lot of stuff. Um, and to do that, we need to get more creative. Unfortunately, some people think they're not creative. And I think that really just comes from how you define creativity. You don't have to be a painter or a musician or some special famous artist to be creative. I think creativity is just two old ideas combined in a new way. So you don't even have to have new ideas, just put them together 
put all your old ideas together. Because, like, is this an eyeball in space or a gas nebula? It's actually both. It's two things. Bikini sunbathing and cats, we combine those, we get something weird. Some of your ideas are going to be weird, and that's okay. Okay? Uh, <laughs> it's okay. When we brainstorm, we have to be open-minded and not judge our ideas yet, right? You're in that creative mode. Make sure if you're doing it with other people, nobody is judging or criticizing any of the ideas. You've got to get in that open-minded mindset before you can create stuff. You're going to, later you're going to look at these ideas and you're going to say, we're not using these cats. You know, I mean, I use them in my presentation to make a point, but you probably won't use them for your company, right? Um, so you can judge the ideas later. I want you guys to create weird marriages of ideas. Weird marriages like mine. When, when my wife and I got together, people were like, didn't see that. Uh, combination happening, but uh, I have some strengths where she has weaknesses and she has some strengths where I have weaknesses and together we form Voltron. That's a robot joke. Anyway, put weird stuff together like stuff you wouldn't expect like the phone and the computer. We got the smartphone which is ruling the world. Uh, sports car, electric car. We got the Tesla Roadster which is totally quiet at 100 miles an hour and people pay $100,000 for that thing. Crazy, right? Uh, bracelet and medical technology. We got Fitbit. People love that. Um, the internet online, people journaling online, sorry, when people started doing their journal online, that became blogging. Pretty cool, right? Or babies, we put babies together with bacon, we got babies wrapped in bacon. That's pretty cool. I rest my case. So my point is combine what people like in surprising ways, two old ideas that you wouldn't expect to go together. You're going to get and keep more customers. It's going to grab attention. You'll stand out. You need to have some some in innovative ideas. It really helps in your marketing and sales. Um, and it doesn't have to be that creative, right? We, we had a client where we were helping musicians, uh, they, they help musicians market themselves with PR and they were trying to get new users for their platform. And there were costs per registration on the site from $2 to $14. The best ads were seven times more affordable. What's interesting is all we had to do really was test different images. Even if all you do is test different stock photos, for example, let's say you're doing Facebook ads, you're going to get dramatically different results. One of them, $14 a user, another $8 a user. All we did was change the photo. Even better, $1.99 per new user. So the more images you test here, the more likely you're going to find that you know unicorn ad that gets you great results. Cool. So those are the five keys to growing your business with online advertising, adapt, get visible, be likable, be more creative, and test a lot of stuff. If you do those things, you're gonna get great results, your company's gonna stand out, you're gonna get more traffic, more engagement, more customers. You're gonna be different, right? You're gonna be unique, you have that unique competitive advantage. This is how we do it when it comes to marketing and advertising. This is the modern way to do it. Not everybody's doing that. A lot of people have limitations when it comes to creating enough stuff or they don't have enough experience with testing. Um, we do this for companies. Uh, you could definitely hire our agency. We, we can talk more about that. Um, we work with other agencies. So, or you can do it yourself, you know, take a stab at it, see what you can do. Uh, if you have any trouble, questions, just you can, we can consult with you. Uh, please comment below. What did you think? Do you have any other questions? Is there something else you want me to go into further? Happy to do that. I'm here on YouTube now starting this new thing to, uh, to help people out with marketing and sales and getting employees, keeping employees, all that kind of stuff. So let me know what questions you have or what, you, what other topics you'd like me to cover. I've got 20 years of marketing and sales experience, so happy to help you out. All right. See you soon. Oh, hit subscribe. Tell people about uh, my YouTube channel. Hit, those, hit that notification bell so you'll see when I get new videos out. And, and check your phone settings. Make sure you're getting YouTube notifications. All right. Okay. I wish you the best in business, marketing, advertising, everything. Take care.